Earlier on, we covered how envelope 4 modulates the amp control in the signal path. The shape of the envelope allows you to control the amp volume levels in association to each note pressed and released. Envelopes can also modulate other elements, like oscillator pitch with envelope 1, to create a pitch drop down to the original note played, adding a percussive sound in attack. Another common place envelope use is for filter cutoff. Drag envelope 2 onto the modulation slot for filter 1, and then drag the cutoff value to its lowest, and then drag the modulation range to full. Now envelope 2 will increase the low pass filter's cutoff value in accordance to its shape. Create a classic growl bass with a medium attack, lower value decay, and sustain at its lowest setting. Tweak the attack and decay, then listen to the different decay slopes when switching from logarithmic to linear mode. To make this sound more expressive, make the envelope amount applied to the filter's cutoff sensitive to velocity. Now the envelope is only at full strength when the MIDI keys are hit at their hardest velocity, and weaker as they are played softer. This makes easy programming for filter variations based on your MIDI velocities to create tonal change and dynamics. A common technique is to re-trigger a slow attack envelope in a fast pattern of varied note lengths. This again helps to create variations to the filter cutoff position as your bass line plays. Listen how some notes are jumping in filter position when the decay hasn't been reached yet. This is due to the envelope trying to continue from the position at the end of the last note. Tick trigger zero reset to make each new envelope trigger have a lowest attack starting point. Now adapt this growl into a jungle sounding warp bass by raising the sustain value to full, making the cutoff only increase and hold with each note played. A signature modulation trait in the dubstep genre is known as the wobble bass, which uses a low frequency oscillator to modulate a low or bandpass filter cutoff. Also a type of modulator, an LFO differs from an envelope, as it is a cycling shape which cycles continuously at a rate you can determine. Once it has been applied to a filter cutoff, it's changing the rate while playing which has become the signature style of a lot of dubstep music. Drag the modulation handle for LFO5 to replace envelope 2's modulation slot assignment to filter 1. Move the cutoff position to the center and drag out the modulation range. An LFO's mod range is positive and negative as the shape can travel up and down whereas an envelope only moves in a positive value. The LFO speed is easiest to use in sync mode which locks it to the tempo of your project and always makes its values musically relevant. After enabling sync mode, you will see the cycle rate in musical measures. The bottom number represents the number of divisions per bar, and the top, how many divisions in length each LFO cycle will be. For example, if the bottom number is 16, it's the same as the 16th grid you will see on your MIDI editor. If the top number is 4, the LFO cycle rate will be 4 sixteenths making each cycle the length of one beat. The pause button snaps each new LFO rate to its relevant position in the bar regardless of when it was actually changed.
Change the shape of the LFO to hear the difference of a rounded sine shape to a sharp, sawtooth, square or triangle wave. For a typical full-on wobble bass, the sine wave is generally used. Sawtooth, square and triangle are best for occasional use when bringing the wobble in and out as a variation effect. Experiment with the LFO starting point in its cycle by dragging its shape from left to right. Enabling a monophonic LFO will stop the LFO re-triggering when playing trill parts. Now assign LFO 5 to modulate the cutoff for filter 2 and experiment with the cutoff position and how large the modulation range is. After this, rebalance the volume of filter 1 and 2 using the individual filter volume controls. <laughs> <laughs> 